In this video I'm going to cover converting a dummy battery that I have for my Canon camera. Dummy battery that I got used on eBay. You just plug this into the mains and then this into the bottom of your camera. I've got a, a monitor on top of my camera that has a, a DC out and what that means is if I was able to plug this dummy battery into the monitor I'd be able to use the battery on the back of the monitor to drive the camera. So if I just unplug the adapter and just have the dummy battery part then in theory I could plug this into the monitor so the DC output from the monitor but the problem being is this jack is kind of like a proprietary size so it's just not very common and I can't get it in the local shops or on eBay to get a plug that's that size so that I can convert it to another one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to splice this cable. I'm going to put a male and female connector on here. So that means that I can plug it into the original Canon adapter. Or I can plug it into the monitor. So if I want to plug it into the Canon adapter, I just plug these two in together. And if not, then I just take this off. That also means that I can shorten this adapter so that it's not got such a long cord on it. So let's go and do that now. So let's get in closer. So what's a dummy battery? So you can see here that's the LPE6 Canon battery for my DSLR and the dummy battery is just the same but it's supplied with DC from a power adapter. So this is my camera monitor with the HDMI in so I can take the output from the camera and that's the output. So that one there is rated at 8 volts. Let's take a look at the power pack. Key thing here is that this adapter outputs 8 volts. That means that I can use the dummy battery with the output of my monitor. Now comes the scary part. This adapter only cost me about $30 used, but they cost an absolute fortune if you buy them new. And I've got to go and cut this cable. So, um, that's Probably a, a good length to have. Here it goes. Let's see what we're dealing with here. That's one conductor. Let's see what else we got. And the second conductor. And let's do the same thing to this other end. Okay, so that's the two bits cut. So I'm going to select a jack and a plug. So these will go in together and I'm going to select the right angle one that's going to go into the side of the monitor like that. So the next thing to do is to find out what polarity the connectors are. So if I just plug in a double-ended plug there I'm just turning on the voltmeter. If I put the positive lead in there and just check the voltage, so that's center pin positive. And if I do the same thing with the plug that I've just cut, careful not to short the wires out. And test that. So that white lead is the positive one. And what that means for these plugs here and jack, I just have to make sure I connect the white wire to the center pin. So let's do that now. So on this plug here, I just take off this o-ring and then I can just take that apart. And for the jack, that just unscrews. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna wire up the white cable this pin here. Let's feed that through that hole. And let's solder that. And we'll just snip off the excess. So now we can see what that looks like. And now you want to solder the other connector. Just going to feed that through the hole as well. And 
and let's solder that one as well. Let's just see if cleaning this up with a little bit of flux is going to try and help that solder flow. Okay, that's much better. Yep, so that looks much better. Nice good connection there. So again, we'll just trim off the excess. And then for some strain relief, let's see if we can bend this tab over. Okay, that should keep that in there fairly secure, which is good. So at these points when you realise you should have put the o-ring over the end first. Let's see if we can fit this over. Cool. It's looking good. So let's get this o-ring on to keep it closed. Okay, so that's one half of that done. It's really good. So let's take the end of this wire and we'll just tin it to make it easier. So the next thing I want to do is solder the white wire of the other end into the centre of that hole there. Okay, I think we'll maybe go with that one. It's okay. Let's see if we can do the other lead now. So let's give that a bit of a clean. Okay, looks like it's starting to go. So the next thing to do is just to crimp this cable. Okay, so that should hold that in quite well. And then we just spin this up. One thing to watch with these cheap connectors on eBay is that you don't spend too much time with the solder iron on the centre pin because the plastic holding the pin can melt. One way to help with this is to insert another connector to keep the centre pin in place so that when the plastic reforms it at least keeps the pin in place. The other thing I find with these cheap connectors is that when you tighten up the outside case it goes beyond the stopping point so that means that when you pull on it it just comes off. So one thing I found is just put a dab of glue on that and then wind that up and then that keeps that nice and secure. Let's set the meter to volts and connect to the Canon power supply and then we'll measure the voltage. So that's good, we're getting 8 volts out of that. Connect the dummy battery to the Canon power supply. We're getting 7.8 volts so the connections are all good. Now let's connect the dummy battery to the monitor. And there we go, 7.62 volts. So now let's try that on the camera. Now the moment of truth. Let's put the dummy camera battery in, connect it to the DC out of the monitor and Okay, so how did we do? So I was able to take my Canon power adapter, take the lead that goes to that and just splice that to put in a new connector and that means I can connect my dummy battery to the Canon adapter and power it from the mains. So that's really good. And I can just ditch that as well. And with the monitor that sits above the camera, I can just take the dummy battery and plug it into that with this short cord. So that's a really good win for me. Cheerio.